The bad people, it doesn't feel good. It hurts. So the key is, we can only think about one thing at a time. So change a habit of thinking about bad people, angry people, and think about the good thing of Jesus. And if you find it hard to think, it's easier to sing. Because you think, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. At the beginning, it will be hard. Then you sing it, and you can change the melody, uh, change the words of the melody. That's why I use Amazing Grace, but I change the word to say, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me all the time, Jesus. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me all the time. Now Jesus has said this too. We can only have one master. Either the Lord or money. If you concentrate on money, then money is our master. If you concentrate on the Lord, then the Lord is the master. So our money can only concentrate on God or on people. If we concentrate on people, we'll be hurt. But if we concentrate on God, our heart will be relieved of burdens, our heart will rejoice, and that way gradually the negative emotions will go away. So for the whole day long, keep singing. But you might say, how about the problem of this person? This person has problem. Okay, let me say this. These are two different matters. You write this down. To handle the emotion in my heart is one matter. To handle a difficult person is another matter. Now write this down. How to handle my emotion is one matter. First, handle the emotions. And the next thing is to handle a difficult person. How to handle a difficult person? First, we have to discern the person. Discern the person. Let me ask you, have you known some people who yell at people all the time and they never change even until their death? They never change their life for a whole lifetime. Have you known anyone like that? Have you known anyone like that? All the years, all the decades, they keep yelling and always get angry. Have you known anyone like that? Yes. yes. These people are hard to change. Can you discern? Some people are hard to change. But little children can change easier, right? Little children can change easier. Yes. And humble Christians can change easier. Yes. Let me tell you, stubborn Christians cannot change easily. <laughs> Even Christians. And I have to say this, I hope you don't mind. Stubborn pastors don't change either. Now, I'm not criticizing anyone. I'm just reminding any pastors, don't be stubborn. We're not always right. We are not always right. Now, my wife sometimes gives me suggestion, and I would humbly say to her, thank you for reminding me. That she sometimes reminded me there's something I need to change, and I thank her, and I say, I'm sorry, I will pay attention to it. In order for us to get, go higher and higher, do we need to be humble? Yes, yes. yes, we need to be humble. If we are not humble, we will stay the same way, and we also will go downward. Have you noticed people who get proud, who always have the heart on money, they go down. Have you noticed that? Yes. They don't go higher, they go down. So we have to discern what kind of person that is. Now, but we don't judge, we just discern, we know how he is. We want to bless a person. Judge means that person has no hope. I don't want to help that person. That's judging. We don't want to judge, but we want to discern. Okay, now, if someone is difficult to change, we keep reasoning with that person. Does it help? Does it help? No. So, with difficult people, what we can do is neglect what they say. And it's hard to change them. Now, you might notice some of you, your, grand, your parents or your grandparents, they have the old way of living. You try to change them, 
it's hard, right? So most people know, uh, well, just leave them the way they are. It's too hard to change them. So we accept them as they are, and then don't take it seriously, and then we don't change. But with love, we can change them a little bit. How can we change them a little bit? And we can love them, care about them, and do nice things to them, and sometimes they will listen to us. Okay? So with difficult people, we don't try to change that much. We try to accept and try to neglect their negative ways. And then with people who are more humble, we can change, try to change, but we don't, we cannot change directly. We have to encourage them first. Thank you for doing all this thing, you're doing well, and, um, and I, I'm so happy to have you. And I have a suggestion, is it okay I can tell you? I have an observation, can I tell you? And then if the person says, okay, then you tell him. But at the same time you say, you're, you're, you're a very good person, and you'll be doing well. And uh, I suggest this, and so that we can uh, work together better, and then if the person accepts it, he might change a little bit, but he might not change altogether. But whenever he change a little bit, the key, write this down. Whenever he improve a little bit, tell the person, you are doing great. When a person change a little bit, if we change our behavior to our spouse, we are nice to them. Now, the first day they may say, why do you talk to me like that? <laughs> what has happened to you? Are you sincere? You're lying. They may say something like this. And after a while, they might accept it, and then they start to change. And then will say, I noticed you have changed. I'm so happy you have changed. You have, I have noticed that you talk very gently now. I'm so happy you have changed. Let me tell you, appreciation is a good way to change people. You can write this down. Appreciation is a good way to change people. So even for people who are willing to change, we need to always encourage them and appreciate them. And then we have to prepare themselves for change. We have to say, I have some observation. I have a suggestion. Can I tell you? Can I, can I tell you? And, then, and, and if I have anything wrong, please tell me too. So we tell them that if we have done anything wrong, please tell me so I can change. That way, then we can have a relationship that we can remind each other. So this is a way to change each other, but this is not easy. In a church relationship, the co-workers, I encourage you to build up this kind of relationship. A church cooperating situation, the co-working situation, that we can talk with each other and say, if we have any suggestion for change, I hope everyone will be open and be willing to change and always appreciate each other. But I have to say this, I hope you don't mind. Sometimes the leader is the hardest one to change. And sometimes the senior pastor thinks, if you suggest me to change, that means you are higher than me. And I want to say this, submission doesn't mean the person close their eyes to the shortcomings of the leaders. The Bible teaches submission doesn't mean that we don't remind each other. Because the Bible has said that so long as there is today, remind each other so that we don't fall into sin. That we need to be aware in order to grow. We need to be open to our weaknesses. But the point is, we don't tell people's weaknesses to tear them down, to hurt them. No. We want to build them up and appreciate the changes. So this atmosphere is very hard to change in a church. If your church has this atmosphere, I, I would say you are doing great. That always there is a spirit of appreciation. Always saying, I like what you did. You're doing wonderful. I appreciate how you serve and what you did. And can appreciate each other. And then when someone has something need to change, we can say humbly and say, uh, I noticed something. Can I say this to you? Can I? Uh, ask you to pay attention to this, and and then if the person is open, that this atmosphere is very beautiful. Let me tell you, my co-workers, they will remind me of anything I need to change, 
and I always say thank you. I always. Now sometimes I don't feel good when I hear that, but I tell myself, say thank you, and really think about what they said. Because when people remind us to change, we don't like it. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. But if we don't listen and we don't respond well, the person will never talk to us honestly. So this is how to correct a situation. So it takes time. And if, you know, the family is one place we practice this. So if you can go home and start to say, thank you for cooking for me all these years. You're so nice, you're so kind to me. You take care of me in every way. And, and then the other person say, thank you for doing all the work and you can earn money to support the family. I'm so happy to have you. So if we keep saying this all the time, then there will be a family of harmony. My wife can feel very comfortable telling me how to change because she knows that every time I will listen to her. Now it doesn't mean necessarily that she is right every time, but I will always listen to her and I will consider what she said to me. But at the same time, we want to handle the feelings. Coming back to the feelings, have you noticed that in one day, we can have many, many complicated feelings coming up? One day. For instance, we woke up late and come to the meeting and then everyone is there sitting there you might feel bad oh i'm late that feeling will come up when someone yells at you you feel unhappy on the way it's all dirty and dusty and hard to walk here and then we'll feel unhappy that unhappy feeling come up all the time sometimes from people sometimes from situation now for people we need to realize the way the person talks affects me greatly and his negative ways now if he is sincere and humble to remind us then it's our job to, to accept it but if the person talk to us in a way to hurt us we know that this is negative things it is garbage but we don't tell them this is garbage we don't tell them but we know that this is something i don't want to take if I take it, I will have no joy. So what I do, I have to say no to it. God loves me. It doesn't matter what it says to me. Now, we need to handle it. God loves me. God has a wonderful plan. And I can rejoice in the Lord. I can keep singing. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. So all day long we can sing like this so that our heart will be peaceful and calm. So that we are not affected by people. So that we can turn off the negative words of people and always take the good words from the Lord and good words, words from people. They are good words from people. For instance, you notice that these three days when I'm teaching all this teaching, and I know, I know that most people haven't heard this teaching before. Because I went everywhere, people said, they never heard this teaching anywhere. I thank God that God basically, now let me tell you how I have this, all these teachings. Basically, I observe myself. I observe myself. How am I being affected by people? What kind of negative thinking and negative emotions I have? How am I doing in my ministry? I observe myself. And then when I observe I'm behaving a certain way, I'm feeling a certain way, I will ask God, how can I change? And through these years, I've learned to say no to garbage and to take the positive words from God and from people and to be reinforced by God all the time. How to sing? to be reinforced by God. So I keep doing this and keep handling different problems. Also, I have counseled many people and I notice how people are hard to change and how I lead them to change and how some people change and some people don't. So I've learned through the, all this process, all this 
teaching I have here all came from my own experience and from, of course, the Bible and from my experience of how to apply it to the Bible. So people said they never heard this teaching before and, and then some people would start to change. But some people would say, too hard, too hard, too hard. So I hope you put this in your mind. I can change. I can change. If I can change a little bit today, I can change a little bit tomorrow, then I can change more. And God has also given me many good ideas. For instance, can you change 1%? Can you change 1%? Yeah, one, you know, one of a, you know, 1%, right? One, uh, one in 100 parts. You just change a little bit. Can you change a little bit today? Start to think positive. If you can change 1% today, 100 days will be 100%, right? Yeah. So that's one way to encourage us. If you think of, I have to change all of, everything is hard. But if I change a little bit, one day, and next day you change a little bit, that means with time, I'll change more and more and I'll become better and better. Whether you can become better and better because the person God is pleased with, that you're following God in all your ways, depends on whether you're paying attention to yourself and changing it. And God has given me this five step to victory. I've given you the other day, five step to victory. Do you remember? First, aware, aware, aware of my problem, whether it's sin, whether it's negative thinking, negative emotions, any of this. Number two, destructive, destructive. very good, you remember. I'm just waiting to see if anyone remember. It's destructive. Number three, yeah, what does the Bible say? Or the biblical principle, or you can say biblical principle. What's the biblical principle? What does the Bible say? So what the Bible say, what can people do to me? They cannot do anything to me. And number four, what is number four? Pray for forgiveness and for strength. Number five, choose to obey. So whenever we notice anything negative, we choose to obey. Now, there is a simple three step to victory. You skip two and three because you already know it's destructive and you know the Bible teaching. Then you go from one, I'm aware, number, and then number two, I pray for forgiveness and strength. And number three, I choose to change. I choose to obey, okay? Now, let me apply this to different um, areas of our life. Negative thinking. Negative, how to change negative thinking. Now many people have negative thinking without knowing it. For instance, some people might say, well, Pastor, you, you can change, but I cannot change. Oh, it's too difficult for me. Now some of you might be saying this in your heart. But, but you might not say it verbally to yourself, but you just feel, no, I cannot change. I cannot learn it. It's too hard. It's a negative thinking and sometimes it's deep in us. For many people, it's deep inside. I cannot change, I cannot improve. So ask yourself, do you have this kind of thinking? I cannot improve, it's too hard to change. Now many people have this negative thinking. Or the negative thinking, I'm no use. I have no education. I'm not smart. People don't like me. Now some people have this very deep in the heart. They think nobody likes them. They are nobody. They're no good. They're good for nothing. They can never be high in the kingdom of God. But let me tell you, anyone here, the Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17, you can write this down. Wow. Psalm 139, Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17. There it says that in the middle of verse 16. All the days of my life before, before one of them came to be were written in your book. O oh God, how precious are your thoughts to me and how numerous they are. What it says here is all the days of our life were written in the book in heaven. It's all written in the book of God. And then inside, what did he write? 
O oh God, how precious are your thoughts. All the thoughts of God are precious. And how numerous. And then in verse 18 it says that it's more numerous than the sand on the beach. What it means is, God already has planned each one of our life. Now, we don't enter the plan automatically. Romans 12, 1, 2. Tell us how to enter the plan. You can write this down. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Tell us how to enter the plan. If we offer our body as a living sacrifice, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of the mind. Then we can discern the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. The perfect plan of God for each one of us doesn't come to us automatically. We have to give ourselves to God and do not be conformed to the world and be transformed by the renewal of the mind by God. And then we can start to enter God's plan. So salvation is not just believing in Jesus. Salvation is letting God change our whole life. That God become our king. So he can save our life on earth. So our heart will be different. Now many Christians believe in Jesus, but they still think the old way. They get angry the old way. Have you met Christians like that? Yes. They believe in Jesus, they behave the old ways. They have not been changed. They, they might be forgiven if they really follow God, but then their life don't change. And God has taught me to gear to change myself. First change myself, and then change the people. How? To be aware of our problems, and then believe that God can change us, and know that these are destructive, so we become aware to consciously change it. Now, the point I was making is, God has a plan for each one of you, written in heaven. One day when we go to heaven, you say, Wow, God, you have written such a wonderful plan. How come I did not know it? Now, many of you will say, I have lived such a weak, my life has been so weak, so full of sins, so full of problems, but you said you have a wonderful plan. And then God will tell you. The reason why you did not enter the plan, I have planned it wonderfully for you, but you did not dedicate your body to me. And you conform to the world, and then you did not, you were not transformed by, by the Holy Spirit. And that's why we did not enter the plan. Let me tell you, when I first became a pastor, I just thought, okay, being a pastor, I'll just preach, i teach, try to do evangelism, try to help the people, and what else can I do? So that's all I can do. But then, after a while, after my transformation of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and I submit myself to God. I listen to God more. And let myself be guided by God more. And I notice that God has guided me. God has spoken to me. That, now not with verbal voice. Not with verbal voice. God has reminded me of my pride. God has reminded me that I've been affected by people. God has reminded me of my frustration. And then when I realized that the Holy Spirit reminded me to take care of that. And when I think of that, the Holy Spirit says, keep doing it. So I keep doing it. So that way I can go higher and higher. And you too, in these few days, with what you learn, it's not just for this week. It's for your whole lifetime. Hallelujah. We need to handle our problems for a whole lifetime. I've been handling every day. And even now I handle it. Even now, at, in a hotel, I would keep saying, God is going to use me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can do greater and greater things. Please guide me to do greater things. And in a few days of prayer, God has guided me something I need to do when I go back to Hong Kong. God has guided me. God has shown me how He has planned for me and what steps He wants me to take. So God keep guiding us. So I'm saying, each one of us is important. Tell the person. You are important. God has a wonderful plan in your life. And you can go higher and higher in the plan if you have a good relationship with God, 
and consciously take care of different problems in your life. Let me ask you, is it very, very difficult when people yell at you that you say, that's the matter, he has been yelling for all these years, it's not going to kill me. And I can praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank God, hallelujah, I can enjoy God, I can relax, and I can just don't take it seriously and be strengthened by God. Can we do that? So it's possible. It's just whether we are willing. The point is, are we willing? Are we willing to do it? Okay, let me give you some more examples. Just now we talked about how to handle, change different, difficult, negative thinking. The negative thinking maybe, I'm no good. Now ask yourself, do you have this in your heart? That I'm no good, I cannot do anything good. My family is too difficult. My spouse is too difficult. My spiritual life is too difficult. I'm too weak. I cannot do anything. Do you have this thought in your heart? I'm sure many people have that thought. So you want to change it and say, I can, I have a wonderful plan. God has a wonderful plan. I can change a little bit. Every day I can change a little bit. And I can go higher and higher and higher. When we have a close relationship with God, God will guide us. Now, so, how do you change the negative thinking? The negative thinking is saying, oh, I have no use. Then you keep declaring. All the days of my life has been written in heaven. It's a wonderful plan. So every day we wake up and say, God has written a wonderful plan for my life in heaven. And God will give me the strength to fulfill this plan. God will use me. God will raise me up. God will bless me. Let me ask you, how can Nigeria be blessed by you? How can Nigeria be blessed by you? If you are all blessed by God and full of joy and full of strength, full of motivation to bless people, you bless the people around you, you would change Nigeria day by day. You can do it. But most Christians, because they say, I cannot do anything, so every day they do nothing. Many Christians don't do much. They just stay the same way, year after year after year. But if we are willing to say, this is how I need to change, and then I change, and then you can become better and better. But this needs a lot of effort. So every day you say, I can be used by God, I can, be, I can change, I can have a close relationship with God, I can enjoy God. Now this needs continual work. I continually work on myself and say, your life is precious. Don't take the negative words of people. Don't have to be affected by them. Think about the good things of God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Okay? The first thing is to change the thinking and then to change the feelings. The thinking must be changed before we can change the feeling. I use an illustration. Two persons, both are very old, both are Christians. Two persons, both are sick. They're not healthy, and they will die in a short time, both. But one Christian says, I've been serving God all these years, and God did not treat me well, and I get sick, and I'm gonna die. Oh, this terrible, terrible, terrible. And this first person will feel very unhappy. But the other person says, all the things I've done for God, God remembers and God will reward me and I'm getting weaker and weaker and even though I have a physical problem but I will go to heaven one day and then God will reward me, I'll be very happy there and even before dying they will say, I'm happy now, I'm happy because I'm going to see Jesus soon. Now his thinking is that he remembers all the good things God has done in his life and all the good things he has done for the Lord and then he will be very happy. Now for me, I prepare myself. One day if I get old, get sick, and very weak, when people come to visit me, I will tell them, can I pray for you? Can I bless you? Can I do anything to strengthen you? I will choose to bless people and forget about my sickness. It doesn't matter. When we are sick, we can pray for strength. Even when we are pain, it keeps us 
continue to pray. When we are weak, it will keep us, keep praying. Lord, give me strength. Take away the pain. So I have decided, even when one day, even if I have, I'm arrested by people who persecute Christians, and they torture me, and this is how I would think. I would say, it's painful. Lord, help me to, be, to, to give a good testimony, to be a good witness, and to have strength from you. And even when they beat me, they'll say, I will say, Lord, help me. Take away my pain. And when the time I finish this, take me to heaven. That I will face it positively. If I face it positively, then I will have more peace and joy. But when Christians, when they, when they are being persecuted, they will say, oh, God is not helping me. Oh, God has discarded me. God doesn't help me. Oh, so God is no good. Uh, that way he will have a lot of pain in his heart. So the thinking affects our feeling. How we think affects our feeling. Many people, they're thinking, my family is not good, I'm not good, I'm not smart, everything is difficult, then the feeling is always negative. The thinking has to be changed in order to have good feelings. Now how can you have good feelings? God is blessing me, God is helping me. When I pray, I experience some peace, thank God for that. That means God is blessing me, God is helping me. So all the time is the positive thought from God. And then all the time singing to God as much as possible. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus at the noon time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Now you know this, when you sing you feel better. That way Every day we do that. When you wake up, immediately we sing. Immediately you think of the good things of God. Then every day we have more and more joy. And then it will take away the negative subconscious mind. Now what is subconscious mind? Subconscious mind is all the experiences we had in the past. It will sink into our deep self. It will sink in our deep self. If from childhood, people have been hurting you. If people have been hurting you from childhood, that all the time you would think, I'm no good, I'm not happy, things are not good for me, things are always difficult, then it sink deep in the heart. For many people, it sink very deep in the heart. Let me use an illustration. In my church one day, years ago, in the front, one day I came back and then there was a chair uh, in the front of the church. It was a small room we used for a meeting. And then I just told the people there, um, if you see a chair up here, uh, please put it down next time. And then one girl, teenage girl, said to me, I didn't do it. She said, I didn't do it. Why did she say I didn't do it? Because every time when there's something wrong in a family, they always say, you did it. Has it happened to you? Yeah. If anything wrong, you did it. So she has been used to that. People always keep telling her, you did it. So when I said, I didn't say anyone, did you do it? I didn't say that. I just say, please, when you see a chair, please put it down. And then immediately she said, I didn't do it. So it's her, in her subconscious mind, if anything goes wrong, it's my fault. And people are blaming me. Let me ask you, do you have that feeling sometimes? It's deep inside us. It's hard to change. It takes a lot of effort. So every time you have this negative thinking, for instance, let me use an illustration. When you see someone important, someone important, Many people will have a feeling. He will look at me. He will, he will just regard me as nobody. Now, many people will think like that. When they see someone good looking, nicely dressed, they will say, that person won't look at me. That is a subconscious thinking. 
the people important will not regard me with dignity, then I'm not important. So we need to change. I am a person of dignity. I'm important. But it's hard to change. It takes time. So every day we declare, God loves me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. And I can change my life with the help of God. Have you seen a game like this? I don't know here if you see a game. Sometimes in carnivals, they have this kind of game. That there are different holes and there are animal head of animal that would come up quickly. And then you have a hammer. And then the head come up and you hit it. And then, and then the head come up, you hit it. Have you seen the game? Okay, it's, it's like this. There are animal head coming up. And then you, but they're not real animal. They're just, you know, it's, it's a game. And then you have a hammer. The, see how many times you can hit it. And then you win if you have any times. And I want to say this. Any time you notice negative thinking or negative emotions or subconscious thinking, any time any of this come up or sin or sin, any kind of sin, immediately take care of that. When you notice you are hurt by someone, when someone says, please do this, have you done this? Has this happened to you? You say, please do it. The person gets angry with you. Why did you tell me to do something? Then, or, or when you say, there's something that can be changed. Immediately the person say, I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Then we can see this subconscious mind coming up. So if you notice that, can you start to handle it? Why am I so sensitive? Why am I so sensitive? Why do I get unhappy so easily? Now how do we handle it? Let me tell you. Many times, when I'm washing dishes, when I'm walking, when I'm on the road, when I think of some people that has hurt me, when I think of some people that has hurt me, immediately, please look at me. Look at me, here. So whenever anything you know, anything that uh, I think of someone that has hurt me, immediately I would think about that person has been hurt by people and I want to have compassion on the person, I want to bless the person, I want to pray for the person, I want to forgive the person. So my bad feeling toward the person is taken care of. Anytime I think of anyone that has hurt me, I will handle it in my life, in my heart that he has been hurt by people. That's why he hurt people. So I would have compassion on them and forgive them and bless them. So my heart become more and more relaxed and all my heavy feeling go away. Then I would handle any negative thinking or feeling in my heart anytime, okay? Now let me ask you now, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Now because what I said is, do you understand it first? Do you understand what I just said? The method. The method is first to have a good relationship with God so that we have the strength of God. And always singing positively, God is loving me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And then if there's any negative thinking, always handle it right away. Ask why am I so sensitive? Why do I get hurt so easily? Now, it's easily said, but I tell you, it takes a long time in order to have a very free spirit, really joyful spirit, no burden, no pain. It takes a lot of work. Now, so, if you have any burdens or any difficult situation you need to handle, you can ask me now. I can answer your question before the break time, so that you know how to handle it. Yes, come up quickly if you have a question. Come up quickly and get a mic. Please get a mic ready. Praise the Lord. My question is, my question is someone that have a change in his life or her life. The question is what? Somebody that has a change in his life and one he's working with have not changed. How can he impact one that refuse to have a change? 
Okay. Just place me. Okay. Some of them have to change. Already. You mean the person refused to change? How do and you have somebody that refused to change. Okay. Will it be for her? Okay. What will it be to okay. change? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, if you remember, I said this. We discern the people. There are people who don't want to change. We have to accept them. And um, now, what if it's a church member, a Christian, who comes to church but they don't change? Let me ask you. A Christian doesn't want to change. You keep talking to them, will they change? Not necessarily. They don't necessarily change. We have to guide them. Now that's the skill of counseling. I hope I have time tomorrow to go into counseling. Counseling is using questions to guide the person. How's your life? How's your relationship? If the person is willing to talk about it, and the person says, it's difficult, it's hard for me to relate to people, and then you can ask, do you want to change? And how can you change? To guide the person is more effective than telling the person to change. People don't like to be told to change. And some people, even if they're guided to change, they will not change. Now, out of all the people here, I hope every one of you will change. But I have to tell you that. I know, as a matter of fact, not every one of you will change. I hope you will change. But I know some of you will just listen and say, too hard, too hard, I cannot change. Or you try to change, but you just cannot. Next morning, you're still unhappy. Every night, you're still unhappy. It's, it's not easy to change. So I encourage you, if you change 1% a day, you can appreciate yourself and say you're doing a good job today. That way, you have more encouragement. We need encouragement. Okay, so some people we just cannot change. We just now. If you have a question, please come up quickly to the front to ask. Uh, please. Ah, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a network? A network. You are staying with. You have a network that you are staying with in the same compound. All he. Or she does, it's just their education on you. Making phone calls, telling his brothers and sisters, so this is what you did. Firstly, accusing you falsely what in what you have never think of, what you have never did. Making go around, going outside to tell you this is what you did. And you didn't do that. You didn't you have, you have no think of doing that. So how do you handle this? So someone accused you falsely all the time, right? Okay, but thank you. Now this is exactly what I said, garbage. If he accuses falsely, will that become true? No. We don't have to take it seriously. We just say, what he said is not true. We can explain ourselves, but after explanation, he doesn't accept it. Just forget about it. But I know it's difficult to relate to someone like that at home. If you have someone like that at home, it's difficult. What we can do, try to be as nice as possible, and, and you can say this to the person. Okay, I'll try to pay attention. If I have any of this problem, I'll pay attention. I'll try to change. And then, uh, now even though you, you don't, you're not aware of any problem you have, but you can still say, okay, I try to change if I have any of this problem, and thank you. That way he will be softer. But you say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He will be harder and harder on us. So people who are stubborn, don't think of changing them, and don't take the garbage. The point is, anyone with problems, don't take the garbage. But we don't tell them, don't tell them. If you tell them, you start a fight. You tell them, if you say, what you said is garbage, you're starting a fight. You just discern what he said is negative. We don't want to take it seriously. Okay? okay. There was another question. Thank you so much. God is using you are a powerful teacher. I encourage you. God bless you. Thank you. I love your teachings. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Just about that accusation. Let me tell you, accusation is like a dressing mirror. Yes. If you are accused you didn't do it, look up and then go your way. Yes. Let me tell you, there are things that will happen. It's only God that will explain you out. Yes. So, 
I, I was I have been over accused until God spoke to me and said, accusation is the last thing that will happen to you before your miracle will happen. <laughs> Joseph was accused before his miracle. Jesus was accused before his miracle. So whenever you are being accused falsely, the Bible says, rejoice and be glad. And there's three legs now for great is the reward in heaven. Stop fighting for yourself when you are accused. Leave it in the hands of God and God will fight your battle for you. God bless you. Now, what you said is rejoice, but you're persecuted. That's true. What I'm doing, I'm breaking down the steps. To come to rejoicing, it takes steps. Yes. First, we have to say this person, what he said, is not right. Yes. It's not true. It has no power in me. The first thing. Second thing, I don't have to take it seriously. And God is helping me. God is blessing me. And I can trust in God to have strength. And then, I would say, to have to come to the step of being joyful is not easy. If someone yells at you, if your spouse yells at you today, it's very hard for you to be joyful right away. It's, we need, need steps. So I, what I'm doing in my teaching is break down the steps. And then you notice which step you are, where you are, and then you change gradually. That um, you want to be joyful, but I have this experience. Someone says something to accuse me, and I said it doesn't matter. But in the middle of the night when I woke up, I find that I have pressure in my heart. I, I know. Do you have similar experience? Yes. I mean, you, on the outside you say, I'll take care of it, no problem. But inside we still have bad feelings. So it takes time to take away that bad feelings and keep saying, God is loving me. Yes, Jesus loves me. So keep singing and, and say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And until we can get rid of it. So that's what I mean, is bring down the steps. And in my teaching, you notice that in handle any of the problems, I always bring down why I'm affected and how I can change. Why I have sins, how I can change. Okay, any questions? Okay, come quickly. If your questions, come quickly to the front and line up here so we can have it all ready so we don't take more time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My question goes this way. You told us that uh, you cannot handle two things at a time, you will only concentrate on one thing. In a situation, let's say, um, I put my question this way. How do we handle depression and the Holy Spirit? How to handle depression? Depression.